So, how's the UAW strike going so far, and who's being hit the hardest? Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, here today with amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. Liz, there's a lot of news coming from a number of angles on the subject of the UAW strike. So let's start out today by talking about how some of the dealers are responding to the strike. Sure thing. Dealers across the country are putting contingency plans into action now that production has stopped at three vehicle assembly plants amid the UAW launching a historic strike against all three Detroit automakers early on Friday. I say, may the better dealers emerge from the pack and sell the most cars. Right on. The focus right now is limited. The plants currently on strike are GM's Wentzville assembly plant near St. Louis, where it builds the Chevy Colorado, GMC Canyon, Chevy Express, and GMC Savannah vans, Ford's Michigan assembly plant west of Detroit, which builds the Bronco and Ranger pickups, and the Stellantis Toledo assembly complex in Ohio, which builds the Jeep Gladiator and the Wrangler. Ford dealer Richard Bazzi says of the Ford Bronco and Ranger, these are already short supply vehicles. You feel that much quicker. And he added, I'll start to feel this in about two to three weeks. Bazzi, who owns three Schultz Ford locations in the Pittsburgh area, said beyond a short-term impact to his inventory, he also is worried about the longer-term ramifications if Ford's labor costs continue to rise. Bazzi told Automotive News, it concerns me that we are at a competitive disadvantage to Tesla and the other transplant automakers. I support anything that is best for all parties and keeps everyone employed. Meanwhile, Ford has been preparing some 1,300 salaried employees to work in 23 parts plants across 15 states, if necessary, so it can ship all critical dealership orders, according to Ford sources. This strategy makes me immediately question impacts to vehicle quality. I mean, how do you like to know that your vehicle is put together by a former admin person who sat at a desk as opposed to someone who does the job every day. Right, I was thinking about that too. It's also being reported that if the strike isn't taken seriously very soon, the union plans to expand its work stoppage at yet-to-be-announced intervals and plans to ratchet up pressure on the automakers. Things can go from bad to worse very quickly. Dealers aren't just sitting and waiting on this issue. LaFontaine Automotive Group of Highland, Michigan, three months ago formed an internal team made up of people from all departments to address a possible strike. Spokesman Max Muncy told Automotive News. Muncy said LaFontaine began stockpiling vehicle inventory over the past 90 days, literally taking every unit available from the automakers. The company told automakers' regional representatives that it would take any vehicle that other dealers were turning down. So, we are stopping short of endorsing that you shop at LaFontaine, because we don't know yet if the dealer group is seizing the opportunity to gouge its customers as well. If someone from LaFontaine wants to call us and say that's absolutely not going to be the case, we will pass that information along to our viewers. In addition to vehicle inventory, LaFontaine has been boosting its parts supply across the Detroit three brands. The group owns a 150,000 square foot wholesale parts distribution center in Livonia in Metro Detroit and a 50,000 square foot wholesale parts center in Grand Rapids, Michigan on the state's west side, Muncie said. So far, he hasn't heard that the striking plants will disrupt parts coming to LaFontaine. Right now, what we can control is acquiring as many parts and inventory as possible to make sure we can ride out whatever storms in front of us, he added. So back to why we are stopping short of telling you that you should be checking out LaFontaine. First, their Google reviews, which should be in the middle four ranges at minimum, are sitting at 3.9 stars after 503 reviews. There are some good reviews mixed in there, but they're also quite old. It's as though they haven't done much good recently. To this point, just a month ago, Tiffany Bowen writes, This place had my blood boiling. I was quoted prices on leases at 2 p.m., so I made an appointment with Pam and quickly drove there. My daughter and I drove 30 miles so they could appraise her car, only to hear that the down payment went from $3,500 to $7,525 and the payment from $99 to $256. They offered me less than I could have gotten to take my fully functional Jeep to the dump. The manager, Bob, was rude, demeaning, and offered zero explanation of why the prices had more than doubled. I will shout from the rooftops to avoid this place at all cost. Way well, to go, Tiffany. Well, LaFontaine, you should have taken better care of Tiffany. Bad news travels fast. At another dealer group, Alan Wildstein, CEO of Alan J. Automotive Network, said his Sebring, Florida dealership group has been preparing for the strike by looking to other areas of the country for inventory. We have been kind of silently behind the scenes trying to bolster our new car inventory from buying cars out of the Northeast, just in small amounts because if too much inventory gets on my lot and then they resolve the strike quickly, which we hope they do, then we disrupt our turnaround and earn system with the manufacturer. So 
We're not going crazy on that, Wildstein said to Automotive News. Alan Jay sells Chevrolet, Buick, GMC, Cadillac, Ford, Lincoln, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram vehicles. Wildstein said Alan Jay also is holding on to used cars the group otherwise might have rid themselves of in case the UAW strike lasts a while and possibly starts a rise in the used vehicle market. Wildstein said, it's kind of two-pronged. We're trying to carefully increase new car inventory. We're letting our used car inventory age creep a little just to be prepared with used cars because I don't think the used car market could strengthen, but that won't happen immediately. Sounds creepy. <laughs> yeah. In addition of a possible parts shortage, Alan Jay also in the last month started increasing inventory of fast-moving parts for Stellantis, Ford, and GM vehicles. So this gets back to the question, is this a dealer you should visit? Like the previous dealer, their reviews are sucking wind. Three and a half stars and zero recent reviews. The bottom line is that when a dealer delights their customers, these customers always leave a review. We call it the raving fan club. If you don't have one, you need one. Yeah. On the other side, when you seriously disappoint your customer, they also leave a review like this one left by Oakley Brooks who wrote, Salesman was great. Everything else was mediocre or poor. Sales manager either lied to me or was ignorant of what went on during service. Finance was average. I wouldn't let the service department touch my friend's child's power wheels. <laughs> <laughs> Dealership manager won't answer the phone or return calls. Typical. After buying a used car that passed the dealer's inspection, I've got around 2500 in the car making it safe and correct. Big I mistake right there. That doesn't include the bumper touch-up needed from the broken taillight falling out when the double-sided tape that was used to cover up the broken mount failed. Oh my gosh. Friends, this is exactly why we always say have a used vehicle inspected by your own mechanic prior to purchase. A taillight being held on with double-sided tape. What a joke. The dealer wrote in response, we appreciate your review and we'll discuss with our staff. A member of the team at our Chevy store will be in touch. Sincerely, the Alan J. Automotive Network. I seriously doubt they appreciated his review. Mm, yeah. Oakley Brooks did come back later to update the review and continues, I was never called, no surprise there, about my original issues, but they did find an error that was made on the paperwork, contacted the dealership, and they corrected it quickly and kept me updated during the process. Very happy with how the paperwork mistake was handled. Hmm, after all of this, I don't seriously think there was a mistake made. No. I'm leaning more on the chance that Oakley discovered something they tried to slip past him, and once caught, the dealership fixed it. Yeah, that's messed up. So, friends, we think you can safely scratch Allen J Automotive Network off your list of dealers to visit. Indeed. While they've been making preparations for the strike, the reviews suggest that maybe they are just laying in wait for a few unsuspecting customers to show up. Friends, all of you can use information from Google reviews as well. If the dealer reviews aren't in the middle four stars range at a minimum, and if they don't have any recent good reviews, I don't even call them to give them a chance, and neither should you. By the way, we've heard other YouTube creators refer to reviews found on DealerRater. Just be aware that DealerRater is a bought and paid for review system with dealers as their members. So how reliable do you think those reviews are? Not at all. Don't use DealerRater. Check Google reviews first. And no, I'm not saying you should totally count on them either. It's just an initial step to doing your homework and nothing more. A couple reminders. Any car salesman or dealers watching out there today who might be thinking, hey, I have inventory and can offer no-nonsense car deals for homework guy viewers, give me a try. Text us right away at 701-441-3399 and we'll definitely be in touch with you. I want to take a moment to sneak in a comment from one of our viewers <laughs> shopping in Florida, of all places. Florida has some of the worst dealers in the country, folks. David writes, just a few months ago here in South Florida, a Honda dealer initially wanted 48000 out the door with Honda Advantage and other markups. But after continually shopping the lowest OTD price and using the cash buying method, agreeing to finance through the dealer on a 72-month note to get a bigger discount, the best OTD price circled back to the first dealer, which came down from the 48000 to 38000 wow. for a new Odyssey and still had the Honda Advantage on it, which was fine. Waited for my first bill, and that's when I paid in full. I will never forget the experience. Thanks, guys, and God bless you for helping others. Wow, what a difference being patient and taking your time makes. Totally. And David also used our cash buyer strategy video laid out in this. Cash buyers can outsmart dealers in 2023 using their own business model. Well done, David, and thanks for sharing your story. David, that's an incredible testimony. By the way, anyone wishing to make a donation to show us some love, you can find a link in the description box for our charity that supports children. That's where we'd love to see your support. 
givesendgo.com slash Kids first. Help support our mission to help these children. Right here, courtesy of the Homework Guide team and our show, is where you'll always find the most dependable tips and helpful information to assist you with finding an enjoyable car buying experience in today's car market. And if you just recently joined the Homework Guide channel as a subscriber, we thank you, appreciate you, and welcome you aboard. Also, thanks again to our many faithful followers who just keep coming back. And to all of our longtime subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off with amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal. The Homework Guy team is serving truth, justice, and transparency in the car business and always will. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.